92% of developers say they use AI-powered coding tools in their work, according to a survey from GitHub and Wakefield Research, which may be causing Google to pit its chance, or for our more European user, <laughs> viewers, to brown its, no, you mean trown its browsers. <laughs> I'm James, this is TechLinked, and if you insist on manually writing your own code, you are now as weird as someone who exclusively writes in cursive. But using AI to do all our coding dirty work might be a bad idea. Just a month and a half after Samsung banned its staff from using generative AI after discovering multiple employees uploaded sensitive code to ChatGPT, Google and parent company Alphabet Inc. are cautioning Googlers not to use code generated by AI chatbots, including Bard, Google's own in-house hallucinator. Oh, so cute. Google commented to Reuters that Bard can output undesirable code suggestions, which sort of contradicts Google's claims that its chatbot can help with developer productivity. Both can be true at the same time, Riley. Okay. I'm sure what they meant to say was that Bard can assist with causing leaks, since AI can reproduce the data it absorbs during training, and humans may review chats leading to potential exposure of privileged information. Of course, poor performance like this was predicted by Several kindergartners when they pointed out that bard rhymes with fard, and you might shard your pants. Mm -hmm. I got that joke from bard. Reddit CEO Steve Huffman, in his eternal quest to Huffman and Puffman and blow Reddit's user base Duffman, has seemingly been caught in several lies. In an interview with The Verge, Huffman claimed the developer of third-party Reddit app Reddit is Fun never wanted to talk to Reddit about the API changes. The Verge, a news outlet composed of journalists, decided to get a comment from Andrew Shu, the developer in question. This. What? I didn't know they were gonna do that. They talked to the person, and it turned out to be an astounding move, since Shu had emails proving he, he corresponded with Reddit. As if Reddit needed any more help shooting itself in the foot, a ransomware group named Black Cat has now threatened to release 80 gigabytes of data they managed to steal from Reddit earlier this year unless two conditions are met. One, Reddit must pay them $4.5 million, and two, Reddit must reverse their API changes. But they did it for the money. Now they'll have even less money. Now they have lots of money to give away. <laughs> On top of all that, Reddit is also dealing with a flood of content related to funny British explaining man, John Oliver. And it actually has nothing to do with hacking of any sort. At least three of the site's biggest subreddits have reopened, but only allow posts related to the Last Week Tonight host an ongoing protest of Reddit's proposed API cost. R slash pics specifically only allows pictures of Oliver looking sexy, which thankfully, that's all of them, baby. I can only listen to the show. I can't watch. And iPhone maker Foxconn is transitioning towards EV manufacturing in the face of souring US-China relations. Joe Biden and Xi Jinping won't even kiss for cameras anymore. That's uh, for the back room. The CEO of the Taiwanese company told BBC that Foxconn is shifting supply chains away from China and increasing investment in EV production in overseas factories, attempting to prepare for a worst case where Taiwan is blockaded or invaded by the mainland. In addition to their existing factory in the great US state of Ohio, 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 Ohio. Ohio. Foxconn plans on opening production in Thailand, Indonesia, and India. According to initial reports, the Indian factory will aim to produce one million two-wheeled EVs per year with help from India due to the country's commitment to net zero emissions. They only got half the blueprints. They do hope to expand the factory to, get to do four-wheeled vehicles as well. <sighs> Someday. <laughs> Those are the best vehicles. Now it's time for the Quick Bits, brought to you by Brilliant. Their interactive and visually stimulating way to learn about STEM topics is good for you to get. Brilliant is a website and an app that makes learning STEM fun, even for people who fall deeply asleep the moment the word variable is mentioned. Learn at your own pace, or a variable pace, in a low pressure environment that allows for failure. There are already over 60 lessons to choose from, including their pre-algebra course, which features puzzles to help you build your mathematic intuition in a safe setting. It's time to further your knowledge with Brilliant. Use the link below and the first 200 people will save 20% off a year of STEM learning today at brilliant.org slash techlinked. According to the laws of physics, the humor of a story is directly proportional to the quickness of the bit. We did the math. Checks out. It's logarithmic, baby. Ooh. Scientists have developed a navigation system that uses muon. <laughs> muon. Mu muon. muon particles produced by cosmic rays instead of radio waves. Researchers were able to use their so-called MuPS system to track a muon detector in a basement all the way from the sixth floor of the same building. Oh, muon. 
They got a muon way to go. This system works because cosmic ray muons shower the Earth's surface at an average of 10,000 per square meter per minute and can penetrate kilometers of rock. So it's the one shower JRPG players can't avoid. <laughs> you got him. Asus has released a firmware update for the ROG Ally that you should not install, according to Asus? Why did you release it? it? came back in time to warn us. The update, called version 319, I'm gonna call it 319. Sure. You see, 319 was meant to increase the Ally's performance when running at a TDP of nine watts. Instead, it makes the handheld's performance worse, not just at nine watts, but also at 15 and 25 watts. Man, Asus must really have his hands full with dealing with Asus all the time. Thoughts and prayers, guys. He never should have cloned. Researchers from the University of Cambridge have claimed to create sustainable fuel out of carbon nano, no, carbon dioxide gas so using a solar powered reactor. Even more impressive, the reactor can also convert certain plastic waste into glycolic acid, a compound I'm not familiar with, but it's widely used in the cosmetics industry. Sounds delicious. And I love cosmetics because the earth isn't the only thing that deserves to feel beautiful again. Dell was sued by the Australian government for marking computer prices as on sale when they weren't in fact on sale. <gasps> When buying a pre-built computer, customers could click on a monitor that was listed as 60% off, even though the discounted cost was just the full price of the product. Dell admitted they misled consumers using the oldest trick in the damn book and have been ordered to compensate or refund any customers who bought the falsely labeled products, which isn't really a punishment. There's been no word on refunds for Dell buyers who thought they were purchasing an English singer-songwriter. What about them? Uh, Dude, you're getting a Dell in your home. Didn't even want it. <laughs> and Apple is still pursuing a six year long legal battle in Switzerland for trademark over any black and white image of an apple. The world's most generic fruit and the world's most generic printer setting. This has brought Apple into conflict with a fruit union Suisse, which is, get this, a century old fruit growers association in Switzerland whose logo is an apple. Now, does it look like an apple logo? Yes, in the sense that it is also an apple, but, but not with a bite taken out of it, which is critical here. The Fruit Union's logo is red, but their concern is that they might come under fire if it's ever broadcast in black and white, given Apple's overbroad approach to trademark. Their director, whose first name is Jimmy and whose last name is intimidatingly Swiss, was quoted as saying, you know, Apple didn't invent apples. We've been around for 111 years, and I think apples have been around for a few thousand more. And the aliens brought them to us. And it's less than a thousand years until the next tech link. Approximately a thousand years less, give or take two days. So come back on Wednesday for more old new tech news. One news a millennia. One fruit at a time.